from the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater brings you Olivia de Havilland and John Lund in And Now Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A poll of the movie-going public showed that most of you prefer romantic drama. And acknowledging that preference, we bring you tonight the gripping story of a man and woman separated by a tragic barrier and drawn together by a strange and irresistible attraction. The outcome of this conflict you will hear in Paramount's Dream Success and Now Tomorrow, based on Rachel Field's best-selling novel of the same name. Starred in our cast is one of the screen's most versatile and charming players, Olivia de Havilland. And co-starred with her is John Lund, making his first appearance on this stage. Our story takes place in a small town in New England. Here's the first act of And Now Tomorrow, starring Olivia de Havilland as Emily Blair and John Lund as Merrick Vance. A week ago, Miss Emily Blair of Blairstown, Massachusetts, came to Chicago to see the celebrated specialist, Dr. Sloan. After days of tests and observations, she sits now in his office, watches the movements of his lips, and from them learns his discouraging verdict. What you're trying to tell me, Doctor, is that there's nothing you can do for me. I'm sorry, Miss Blair. No hope at all. I'll never see you again. There's always hope. Miss Blair... Two years ago, in 1935, you had a severe case of meningitis. The result is a marked deterioration of the auditory nerve. I know of no cure for it. I see. But I'm only one man, Miss Blair. There's Chase of Johns Hopkins, Merritt in Rochester, Corot in Montreal. And I've seen them all except Corot. I've been examined and tested by so many specialists. I, I couldn't face another one right now. I'm going home so far. Perhaps that's best. I'm glad you haven't let your deafness be a handicap. You read lips remarkably well. I've had excellent teachers and a great deal of practice. Well, thank you, Doctor. Oh, wait a minute, Miss Blair. A doctor's obligation goes beyond mere diagnosis. Your personal life may have a bearing on what anyone can do for you. You're not married, are you? Well, now, what possible bearing has that on the case? It might have a lot to do with any advice I could give you. Well, I'd rather not discuss my affairs. As you wish. I only want to help you. Well, I... I suppose there's nothing I shouldn't tell you. My parents died some years ago. I have a younger sister. She lives with me. And so does my aunt, who manages our factory. But no husband. I'm engaged. Well, then. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a full and happy life, regardless of your hearing. Except, Doctor, I've no intention of marrying until I'm cured of deafness. I will not inflict this handicap on someone else. Oh, but that's absurd. Please, nothing... Doctor. I've discussed this with my fiancé. It's a matter entirely between ourselves. Now, if you'll come and be out of your feet. Miss, your bags are in the drawing room. You getting on now? How soon are we leaving? Five minutes, miss. I'll, I'll walk down the platform here. Yes, ma'am. Hold on. Gangway! Gangway! Hey, look, gangway! Lady, look out! Look out there! Get out of the way! What's the matter with you? You want to get yourself killed? I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean to grab you, but that baggage truck was about to run you down. I didn't hear it coming. You see, I'm deaf. I know. You sure you're all right? Perfectly all right. I'm getting on that train, too. Here, let me give you Thank a hand. Thank you. I'm sure I'll manage nicely myself. 
Okay, manage nicely by yourself. Blair. Miss Blair. Yes, Conductor? We'll be in Blairstown in 10 minutes. Thank you. Dr. Cab here, Mr. Mead. Why, sure. But aren't they coming down to meet you? Did you say something, Mr. Mead? I said, aren't they coming down to meet you? No, I wanted to surprise them. Oh, your cab, it seems to be engaged. Huh? There's someone in it. Uh, sorry, mister. I've already got a passenger. Oh? Oh, I see. Oh, Mr. Mead, I, I think I'd rather walk. If there's any walking to be done, Miss Blair, I'd like to do it. Apparently, you know my name. Yes. I'm sorry, but I... Mine's Vance. Dr. Merrick Vance. Well, Dr. Vance, you've seen me embarrassed once. The baggage truck, remember? I'd rather you didn't see me embarrassed again. Uh, meaning... That I'd feel much better if you shared this cab with me. Just as you say, Miss Blair. Where to, mister? Uh, Dr. Weeks out, please. Oh, you're a friend of Dr. Weeks? He practically brought me up. He's our family doctor. Isn't he everybody if you're in Blair's town? I'm sorry, Miss Blair. For what? I've been staring at you. Cynical interest, Dr. Van. You're pretty good at reading lips. I'm sorry I shoved in on you like this. Well, if it was your cat, Dr. Van. Yeah, but you're Miss Blair of Blair House. One just doesn't do that in the Blair. I beg your pardon. Uh, Skipper. Dr. Weeks, please, mister. Yeah, how much do I owe you, Skipper? Dr. Vance, please let me pay Miss me. Sorry, but even a Blair can't buy this ride. I enjoyed it too much. Goodbye, Miss Blair. <laughs> Emily, dear, I'm so glad to see you. But, darling, why didn't you let us know? Just a surprise, Aunt Martha. Tell me, how is everybody? Fine, fine. And what about you, dear? No luck. Another thing. Oh, Emily. We'll talk about it later. Where's Jess? Still at the mill. But you'll be here for dinner. Reporting to the boss, huh? Oh, really, dear, he's done wonders at the plant. And it's all because of you. You're all he ever talks about. He's been so wonderful, Aunt Martha. Emily, dear, why don't you marry him? You'd be much happier. You know why. But, darling... No, I couldn't stand having him see me stare at other people's lips, watching me look around before I take a single step. <laughs> we bears are much too stuck up for that. What about Janet? How's Janet? Your sister needs a talking to, my dear. She's out entirely too much, and no accounting for it. Who knows? Maybe it's romance. Well, I'd better go freshen up. Hurry, dear. I'll phone Jeff right away. Oh, Dr. Will's coming for dinner, too. Wonderful. Oh, Jeff, don't be scared. No, I mean it, Janet. You shouldn't come to the office like this. Oh, darling, please don't go. Oh, it's just hiding, lying about working late. But, Jeff, we didn't want to fall in love. We tried our best not to. <laughs> Maybe we didn't try hard enough, huh? Dear, you haven't kissed me all day, and I... Oh, now what? Hello. Here? Yeah? Oh, Aunt Martha. What? Why? Why, that's wonderful. How is she? Emily, she's back. Amy. She what? Oh. Well, I'll, I'll be right home. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Aunt Martha. She wanted to surprise us. She surprised us, all right. You know better. That specialist in Chicago couldn't do anything. Poor Emily. But we've got to tell her, Jeff, about us. Deliberately hurt her? No, oh, I simply can't do it, Janet. If only she could hear, I'd, I'd tell her in a flash. She could take it then. She can take it now. Oh, all right, all right. 
I guess I can stand it a while longer if you can. Come on, we'd better go up to the house. And that's why you sent me, Dr. Will. Emily Blair. That's right, Merrick. Because Sloan could do nothing for her. How did you know? Well, she sent me a wire before she left Chicago. Look, Dr. Will, I'm not for the Blairs. Sure, I've had some success with deafness. But I'm just a guy working in a free clinic. Merrick, we've known each other a long time. You're very close to me, my boy. But so are the Blairs. And just what do you want me to do? I want you to stay here for a while and treat Emily Blair. Oh, you know I'd do anything in the world for you, Dr. Will, but this I can't see. If my work is any good, people need it who can't afford to go to specialists. I'm needed far more in Pittsburgh than I am in Blairstown. Ah, look, uh, can we talk about it later? Later? Well, the Blairs expect me for dinner. And they expect you, too. Now, wait a oh, minute. Aunt Martha insists that I bring you. Who's Aunt Martha? Martha Evans, Emily's aunt. She manages the mill. Oh, you will come, won't you? Me? Having dinner with the Blairs? Sure. They won't throw me out. <laughs> no, sir. Jeff and I are having coffee in the study, Dr. Vance. Won't you join us? Oh, thanks. Uh, where's Dr. Will? Cane Bridge, I think. We're all leaving for the Hodges dance at 10. I hope you'll come along, too. Now, don't worry about me, Miss Blair. I hope you're not too scientific to walk, Doctor. Jeff, turn up the radio. I'm afraid I never had time to learn. Yes, you come and dance. By all means. Emily, dear, this is the tune we danced to at our engagement party. May I? But remember, I can't hear the music. Cigarette, Doctor? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jeff. I couldn't. Oh, come on. We'll start again. Poor Emily. She's trying so hard not to let her deafness be a handicap. Yes, I see. Oh, I am sorry. Nice ball, darling. They're playing it faster than they used to. No, really. It's no use, Jeff. And it's really no fun dancing when you can't hear music. But, Emily, what about the Hodges party? If you don't mind, Jeff, I don't think I'll go. Emily. But, darling, we promised. Yes, I know. So you go ahead without me. With, without an escort? Of course not. Jeff will go with you. That's all right, Jeff, isn't it? Emily, there'll be lots of people there not dancing. I know, dear, but I, I'm tired. I, I'd rather not go, honestly. Well, darling, we said we'd be there early. Yes, you'd better leave. You're sure you don't mind? Of course not, darling. And have a good time. Good night, dear. Good night, Dr. Fern. Good night, Mr. Soden. Excuse me. I'll turn off the radio. You, uh, don't like to make compromises, do you, Miss Blair? You think that's why I'm not going to the Hodges? Isn't it? You're very observant, aren't you? That's part of my business. Besides, I know much more about you than you realize. We've met before. We have? Mm-hmm. It was at a Christmas party at the mill. Our name wasn't Vance then. It was Bankovich. You were about seven and I was... I was twelve. You were giving out Christmas baskets to the workers. Everybody thought you were so cute. I hated you. Would you like to know why, Miss Blair? Not particularly. I'll tell you anyway. A week before Christmas, my father was let out of his job. He didn't have much to eat that winter. My father never got over it. He died a few months later. Do you blame me for hating your mill and everybody connected with it? Well, I'm sorry it happened, of course. But it wasn't my fault. No, it wasn't. Forget it. You've had a hard time, haven't you, Dr. Vance? Oh, not too tough. Dr. Will practically adopted me. Put me through medical school. Oh, I see. That's why I'm here tonight. He wants me to try to cure you. Me? Oh, I know. You never heard of me. But I've helped a lot of deaf people, Miss Blair. Dr. Va Vance. I've been to some of the best specialists all over the world. I know. But they don't know anything about my treatment. 
You see, it's something I stumbled on in a free clinic in Pittsburgh. Oh? No. On second thought, Miss Blair, I don't think the surroundings of the clinic would suit you at all. I'm quite sure they wouldn't. Besides, I don't think I'd make a very good guinea pig. I'm not so sure of that. And since you aren't looking at me, I can say that deafness isn't the only thing I'd like to cure you of, Miss Blair. I beg your pardon. Did you say something? I was saying that uh, I don't think I'll wait for Dr. Will. Good night, Miss Blair. <laughs> A cup of coffee, Merrick? Oh, thanks, Dr. Will. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you ran out on me last night. No, not on you. On Emily Blair. Oh, what happened? Oh, nothing. Just that she still thinks of me as an immigrant kid from the wrong side of the river. Oh, now wait a minute, Merrick. Emily's a wonderful girl. Yeah, she's a tearing beauty, all right. And at least she doesn't feel sorry for herself. You think you could do something for her? I mean, if you had time. And she wanted me to? I might. You know, I've never had a meningitis deafness. I think I'd like to try it. My boy, I'm delighted. Now, wait a minute. I'd have to be in Pittsburgh at least once a week. I'd have to fly. That costs money. Oh, you leave that to me. I'll have my old office fixed into a nice little laboratory for you. We'll wire for everything you need. And I'll have Emily Blair here on Monday. All right. But remember, I'm doing this for you, and you alone. I understand, my boy. Perfectly. Won't you sit down, Miss Blair? Thank you. Emily didn't understand the other night how far you've gone in your special field, Merrick. I, I ought to have told her more about you. You certainly made up for it today, Dr. Will. She's here because I believe if anyone can help her, you can. Oh, and Merrick, if Emily decides to take your treatment, we'd like to keep it a little secret. But why? Well, for one thing, Dr. Vance, my aunt wants me to see Corot in Montreal, and I don't want to. I want to stay home for a while. If your treatment should be successful, it'll be a happy surprise for all of us. And if it isn't, it'll save the others another disappointment. I'm very hopeful. Very hopeful. There's one thing, Miss Blair, before we go any further. If we start this, I want to be sure you'll see it through. Just what does that mean? The treatments involve injections twice a week. A special serum that I've developed. How long will it last? I haven't any idea. Well, I mean about how long. How long did it take with your other patients? That's no indication. None of them had had meningitis. And not all of them were cured. You have much faith in yourself, have you? No. And uh, you're not going to like the treatment. You're going to feel pretty sick after some of the injections. That's why I want your promise to stay with it until something is proved. Would you tell me at once that you knew it was useless? Of course. My time has a certain value, too, Miss Blair. Very well, I promise. And Dr. Will seems to have enough faith for both of us anyway. Seems as though we're both doing this for Dr. Will. You know, it's, uh, it's a lucky break for us that deafness isn't one of those ailments where you have to like the doctor to be helped. Or the doctor has to like his patient. You can roll up your sleeve, Miss Blair. <laughs> Stars Olivia de Havilland and John Lund will return in a moment in And Now Tomorrow. It is reasonable to say that without specialized committees in Congress, important legislation might never be accomplished properly. Because of the number, only those bills regarded as most important are passed from committee. In that event, it would seem that the Congressional Committee would be more of a hindrance than a help. But committees in Congress offer the only genuine study of the need and probable effect of prospective laws. Besides, almost no congressional member has time to do individual study on the advocated bills. So the recommendations of the committees carry great weight.
The most powerful include the Appropriations Committee and the Ways and Means Committee, which deal with tax bills. Their measures have the right of way at all times. The power to give preferential places on the calendar to other bills rests with the Rules Committee. Only leaders of the majority party delve into the Steering Committee. Its purpose is to hasten favorable legislation. So what may be only a committee discussion today may be federal law tomorrow. We return you now to William Keeley. Act Two of And Now Tomorrow, starring Olivia de Havilland as Emily Blair and John Lund as Merrick Vance. <laughs> For more than two months now, Medic Vance has remained in Blairstown. And unknown to her family, Emily Blair comes to his improvised laboratory twice a week. Not even her fiancé, Jeff Stoughton, knows of her visit. But Jeff has other matters to keep his mind, and his spare time occupied. What do you want me to tell her, Janet? Darling, our engagement was a mistake. While you were away, I fell in love with your sister. Well, can't you? Then I'll tell Emily myself. I'm sick and tired of feeling like a thief just because I want something that belongs to me. You're not her property anymore. If you tell Emily one single word now, you and I are through. Jeff! Oh, Jeff, don't say such a thing. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I I had to make you understand. Jeff. Oh, Jeff, put your arms around me. Darling. We're in your house. Someone may come in. I told you, Aunt Martha went to Boston. Yes, but Emily You may... haven't noticed. Every Tuesday and Friday afternoon, she's gone. <sighs> Wouldn't it be a laugh if she were double-crossing you? Janet. I just can't help being that. I can't stand this much longer. I can't. In case you're interested, Miss Blair, this is the 22nd treatment. Your arm looks sore. Does it hurt? Yes, a little. More than a little. But uh, you're not afraid of pain, are you? Maybe you even like to suffer. I don't know what gives you the right to say that. Why don't you marry the guy? It seems to me you know more about my affairs than there's any need for. Anything that affects your state of mind affects your health. Anything that affects your health is my business. I'm your doctor, remember? Very well, doctor, since you insist upon my saying it. You ought to know how unfair it would be for me to marry Jeff, the way things are. Unfair to whom? To him, of course. Who else is there? You. Really, Doctor, I just don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, Miss Blair. Same time Friday. Well, Miss Blair, only half an hour late. You're improving. Last time, it was 40 minutes. I'm sorry. I must have walked too slowly. Oh, that's all right. Just make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in half an hour. You're going out? Just sit down and read a magazine. That is, uh, if you care to wait. You're not very polite this afternoon, are you? About average for me, Miss Blair. About average. When you say half an hour, you do mean 30 minutes, don't you? I'm sorry. I must have walked too slowly. It's kind of you to give me lessons in manners, Dr. Vance, in addition to all your other kindnesses to me. No one could teach you manners, Miss Blair. You know them all. Oh, now, look. It's been over 10 weeks since I've been coming to you. Do we always have to fight? It isn't fair, is it? Especially when I have all the sharp weapons. I... I have an appointment with my manicurist. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother to wait. You know, it's funny. You came first because of Dr. Weeks. Today, you're here because you have an appointment with your manicurist. But I'm not discouraged. Someday, you're going to come here just because you want to get your hearing back. Doctor, you think you could stop back at the house later? Frankly, Miss Blair, I doubt it. Well, I wouldn't think of bothering you if Dr. Weeks were here. But Carrie, our cook, has a terrible cold, and Aunt Martha suggests... You can tell your Aunt Martha I'll be over after dinner. Now, if you'll step into the laboratory... Mm -hmm. It's the 
flu, all right, Miss Blair. Keep Carrie in bed the rest of the week. And have this prescription filled right away. Thank you, Doctor. You sure you won't stay? A drink? I'm sorry, but I have to... there's a phone call for you. Oh, thanks, Miss Evans. You can take it on the extension there. Thanks. Hello? Hello? Yes, it's Dr. Vance. Who? Peter Gallo? Yeah. What's the matter, Peter? Little boy? Yeah? What's the temperature? I'll be right over. Yes, right away. Goodbye. Do you mind if I make a call? I need a taxi. Well, if it's urgent, why don't you take one of our cars? Well, if you wouldn't mind. It's an emergency. Of course. It's the van's in the garage. Dr. Van. Yes? Let me go with you. Why? What for? Oh, just for the ride. Please, I'm bored stiff this evening. You won't find it amusing where I'm going. Shanty town. I'd still like to go. All right. Get your hat and coat. How is he, Mrs. Gallo? What does the doctor say? He isn't sure yet. He told me to wait out here. You're Angie Letter, aren't you? I'm your new player. Don't you remember me? We went to school together. You think I don't remember you? I remember you all right. If you'd rather, I'll wait outside in the car. No, it doesn't matter. Angie Letter. Yes. He says... He says it's a math story. Peter. Oh, no. I haven't any choice, Angie Letter. He's too far gone to risk taking him to a hospital. I'm going to operate here. I, I told him... Do what he thinks best. I'll need all the hot water I can get. Boiling hot. I'll get it, Doctor. Is there anything I can do? Yes, plenty. I'll have to count on you to give the anesthetic. Do you think you can, Miss Blair? I think I can. And if you start feeling faint, be sure to tell me. Don't wait too long. I won't. And take that red stuff off your fingernails and start scrubbing your hands. <laughs> Doctor. I think you'll be all right now, Angeletta. I think you'll be all right. Doctor, how can I say thanks to forget it? You'll probably sleep now for hours. I'll be back in the morning. Be sure to take his temperature every hour. If it doesn't go down steadily, call me. Yes, Doctor. Excuse me, I'll go wash up. Emily. Emily, I, I want to thank you for what you did. I won't forget it ever. It's going to be all right. I know he is. Oh, Angeletta. It seems a long time since high school days, doesn't it? I'm sorry we haven't seen more of each other. Why would we? I don't live in your world. You always had the best of everything. I think I hated you for that. Yes, I always had the best of everything. But now I think you're wonderful. If you're ready, Miss Blair, I'll take you home. I'm ready. Do you mind if I keep the light on in the car? Light? Why? Because it's hard to see if it's dark. I can't tell if you're talking or not. Oh, you feel like talking? There's one thing I'd like to know. That little boy. What would have happened if you hadn't operated? He would have died. Quickly. Kids die like that, Miss Blair. I don't think I'll ever forget tonight. You must take great skill and courage to meet an emergency in a place like that. In Shantytown? How'd you like it? I didn't like it. I met a lovely girl. Just a worn out. I hated it. You did pretty good, Miss Blair. Do you have any sensation of hearing just then? Hearing? No, but it's funny you're asking me that, because at times you're so easy to talk with that I... Well, I don't have forgotten I was there. You know, it's a shame you weren't born poor. Poor? That easy rut of prosperity you were born into. That you'd be stuck in if you marry that guy you're engaged to. I happen to love that, Toten. And the only kind of life I want is the kind that we'll have together, whether you approve or not. Okay, if that's what you want, I hope you get it. How about stopping for a cup of coffee? I'd like it very much, Dr. Van. I, uh, 
I have a first name. If you feel like using it. Well, it's very kind of you. But I don't think it would be professional now that I'm your anesthetist. Okay, baby, that's another round for you. Did you say something? Oh, no, no. Well, you're home, Miss Blair. What time is it? About 12.30. What's Mr. Jeff Stoughton going to say about this? Why, nothing, of course. You're driving past the garage, Doctor. I'll let you out of the house. I can put the car away. Thank you, but... Wait a minute. Huh? The garage, there's a light in the upper window. Shouldn't there be? No. Would you mind turning it out? Hello. Put the stuff down there on the drive. It's Emily, Dr. Jack. We were fools to come up here at all. We've done nothing wrong. There has to be some place where we can talk alone. Hey, look, he's walking this way. The door's in the window. Keep quiet. He's coming up the stairs. Oh, Pete's sake, keep quiet. Oh. Oh. I beg your pardon. Yes. He'll tell him. No, he won't tell him anything. I hope he does. I want him to tell her. Doctors don't tell other people's secrets. Everything all right? Wait, listen. Yes, Miss Blair. Everything's all right. <laughs> don't you ever leave this laboratory, Merrick? Oh, hello, Doctor Will. Uh, what have you got there? The auditory nerve from a rabbit. Want to take a look? Yes. Hmm. Looks like regenerating tissue to me. It is. Three weeks ago, I started injections of serum. The rabbit has been stone deaf. Same serum you've been using? No, it's something new I'm working on. But I uh, haven't got it yet. The rabbit died. I see you cured the disease but killed the rabbit. Merrick, what about Emily? Do I really have to go to the Blairs for dinner? At Thanksgiving, they're expecting you. You haven't answered my question. You know, if there was anything to tell, I'd tell you. Oh, by the way, I have a letter from Dr. Corot in Montreal. He wants to know more about my serum. That's a great compliment, Mary. As Martha said on having Emily see Corot, I'm afraid we can't postpone it much longer. Why don't you say what you mean, Doctor? <laughs> Do I have to? No. No, I guess you don't. I know I haven't been able to help her. Dinner at the Blair's at 4 o'clock, you said? I'll meet you there. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Van. Am I too early? No, no. The others are having cocktails in the house. Should we go in? Uh, there's something I'd like to tell you first. Yes? You know, there's no place as beautiful as New England in November. And nothing suits this background more perfectly than you do. You have just the right color, just the right touch of thought. Is that what you wanted to say to me? No. It's been almost five months since we started this treatment. And you made a promise then to stay with it until something was proved. It wasn't too difficult. I made a promise too. Yes, to tell me if you knew the treatment wouldn't help me. Do you consider five months very long? Oh, very long, Doctor, when you count every day of them and wait and hope. You know, at first I didn't... I didn't have any faith in you. I didn't even like you. And then after that night when you operated on the yellow child, I... What is it you're trying to tell me, Doctor? Another failure? I don't want to give up. But you have a perfect right to know that the prospects aren't too bright. I guess I should have suspected it. Well, there's always Dr. Perot in Montreal. No, there isn't. Did you say something? I said no, there isn't. No, there isn't what? Dr. Perot regards the meningitis deafness as incurable. I wrote and asked him. But I could have told you a month ago that I wasn't getting anywhere. That wasn't any too honest, was it? Not if you were sure. Oh, well, there's no such word as sure. I didn't tell you because, well, I just didn't want to go back to Pittsburgh. I thought you liked Pittsburgh. 
There's no Emily Blair there. What did you say? I said there's no Emily Blair in Pittsburgh. I see. You can't cure me, so by way of compensation, you're willing to make love to me. But who are you that a man can't make love to you? A princess in an ivory palace or something? You might at least have had the good taste to keep it to yourself. I never learned your kind of good taste, so I can finish what I was going to say. You're engaged to a man named Jeff Stilton, but you won't marry him. Why? Because you're deaf. That wouldn't make any difference to me. You think it does to him? Well, whether it does or not, he won't go on waiting forever, even though he is a Pennsylvania Stilton. Knowing him, I am tall. I have dared to talk to me like this. Never. Maybe that's what's the matter with you. Why don't you try acting like a human being for a change? Pride isn't enough for even you to live on. Have you quite finished, Doctor? Yes. Maybe I've said it all wrong, but at least I've said it. Then perhaps we'd better go into the house. Oh, well, here they are. Just in time for a drink. Cocktail, Emily? Emily, will you have a cocktail? No, thanks. Doctor? Thanks. Jeff, there's something I want to say to you. To everybody. I have a confession to make. A confession, dear? I'm serious, Aunt Martha. For the past five months, Dr. Vance here has been trying to cure me with a special serum he discovered. That's why I've avoided going to Montreal. Emily, at least you might have told me. I didn't want to tell anybody. And anyway, it doesn't make any difference because Dr. Vance's treatment didn't work. I'm responsible for the whole thing. Merrick didn't want to do it. Emily didn't want to do it either. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard. Fancy Emily going to this handsome young doctor on the block. Dennis, behave. Please, I'm not finished. Dr. Carroll can't see me either. Dr. Vance had a letter from him. Now, apparently, no one can cure me. Yes, I'm going to be deaf all the rest of my life. Oh, Darling, I don't... For the past two years, I've been indulging myself in a very selfish attitude. I've been asking you to wait, and not giving you any idea how long you'd have to wait. Dr. Vance made it very clear. I guess I was just too... too proud or, or something to see it for myself. Yes. If you still want it that way, I'll marry you just as soon as you like. I've always wanted it just that way, Emily. Oh, Jeff. I hope you say it. Then we'll have our Christmas wedding after all. Even if I can't hear the wedding, Mark. Dr. Weeks, Medic Vance, is getting ready to return to Pittsburgh. 
He hurried to completion the last experiment with his new sitter. Excitedly, he called for Dr. Weeks to see the result. All right, Dr. Will. Hit the tuning fork and watch the rabbit. What? He jumped. Sure he jumped. It scared him. Last week, this rabbit was dead. He's had five shots. Very small ones, but he's cured. Man, a, a complete cure? Yeah. But on a rabbit. I'll have to go back to Pittsburgh to really test it. And it'll have to be on human beings. Volunteers. Mm. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Well, then I'll see you after I get back from the rehearsal. Rehearsal? Yes, at the church. I'm to give the bride away. Oh. Be sure to give her my congratulations. Thanks for the next home, Dr. Weeks. Tell me, how did the rehearsal really go? How was the music? My dear, everything was perfect. Doctor. Hmm? Did you understand it? Did you know it first? And I think moves would be the better word. And by the way, where is she? She and Jeff should be along in a minute. Now, what's the mystery? You said you want to see me alone. Yes, it's about Merrick Vance. He just developed a new serum. He's been treating a rabbit, death from birth. Yes? The day it could appear. Merrick's going back to Pittsburgh tomorrow. More tests, and then experiments on human patients. That'll take a long time, won't it? Mm, long time. Can't fool around with serums, you know. No, no, of course not. Oh. Now you run along to bed. Good night, Emily. Good night, Dr. Will. Miss Blair. I know it's late, but I've got to speak to you. Sure. Come on in. Dr. Will told me tonight about your new cure. Sure. I have no cure. A rabbit isn't a human being. No, of course not. But it might mean that a human being could be cured, too. I don't know that. There's still lots of work to be done. Finding out if what'll work on a rabbit will work on people. What people? Volunteers. Charity patients back in Pittsburgh. You don't have to go to Pittsburgh, Dr. Vance. I want a volunteer. The answer is no. I don't see why. Those people at the clinic, are they any better for your purpose? Do they want their hearing back any more than I do? Now, look, Miss Blair, I've tried to tell you... I know, I know, that you have to test the serum. Well, then, test it on me. Look, Dr. Vance, you remember that first night you came to our house. I told you I didn't think I'd make a very good guinea pig. Well, I was wrong. I'd make a fine guinea pig. Emily Blair. No better than a charity patient? You have changed, haven't you? What does it matter? Well, it matters to me. I've changed, too. I can't experiment on you any longer. I tried to tell you that Thanksgiving Day, but you shut me up. You did something else that day, Dr. Vance. You took away my hope. With no hope of hearing, I committed myself to marrying Jeff as I am. You love him, don't you? Isn't that enough? It needn't be. When Dr. Will told me what you've been doing, the hope was born again. I know now that I can't live without it. But you can and you will. I'm not going to let you hope again. But you can't stop that. As long as you're working, I'll be hoping. You won't give up, will you? For you? No. No, I guess not. As long as you're deaf, I'll go on working. Until I can give you the only thing that you want from me. Well, don't make me wait till then. Start now. Now? Yes. You know, don't you, that is it pretty dangerous? You mean I might die? No. But you might be very sick. We may easily fail again. I'm not afraid. You're going to be married in a couple of days. Jeff has waited for me now for more than two years. You don't mind waiting a little while longer. Very well. It'll only take a second to prepare the shot. Sit down with you. Thank you. The immediate injection will feel like the others. Any reaction should set in almost once. Hold your sleeve up, please. That's better. Hurt? No. I uh, heard voices, so I came down. Oh, hello, Dr. Will. Seems the treatments are continuing. That's right. I had a hard time persuading Dr. Vance, though. So. A good doctor is never persuaded to do anything he believes wrong for his patient, is he, Merrick? Is that the new serum? 
That's right. And you chose to experiment on Emily with it? He didn't choose to. I insisted that he give it to me. Merrick, the serum is untested. It's dangerous. Emily's consent makes no difference. Well, I see I'm talking a language that neither of you wants to understand. I'm taking you home, Emily. I... Emily. Emily, are you... What's the matter, Emily? Uh, Dr. Will. Fool. Help me get into the couch and then get my car. Dr. Will. How is she? The pulse is regular. She's still unconscious. She's going to live? Yes, yeah, she'll live. No, well, thanks to you. Well, I can leave now. But I had to know. Yes, of course. What time is it? Ten past seven. Just time for you to make the eight o'clock train. Just. Dr. Will. Dr. Will. All right, you're home in bed, Emily. You're all right. Everything's all right. Dr. Will? No, he's not here. He comes soon. He's on the train to Pittsburgh, my dear. He went away. Not until he knew you were all right. I see. What happened to me? The injection, it uh, produced a sort of uh, shock. <laughs> you had us worried. Oh, why did you go away? No, no, no. We'll talk about it later. You try to rest. Nurse. What time is it? Oh, good morning, Miss Blair. It's 8 o'clock. I was about to get you some breakfast. And then Dr. Weeks wants to see you. It's so gloomy in here. I'll pull the drape. Won't matter much, though. A real nasty day. Rained all night, and now it's turned to sleep. Fine day to be sick. Well, I've started a fire in the fireplace. That should cheer you up. Anything you want before I bring your tray? No. No, thank you. I'll be back in a few minutes. <coughs> She should know at once. No, I want to tell her myself. Where's Jeff? He'll be here soon, dear. Oh, I want to see Jeff's face. Dr. Will. I wish Dr. Vance had waited. So do I, my dear. He should have been the first to know. Oh, no, darling. Jeff should be the first. You don't know what this is going to mean to him. Almost as much as it means to you. And to me, darling. To me. Hello, Janet. How's Emily? She's waiting for you, Jeff. In her room? Yes. I'll go up with you. 
How is she, Jim? She's fine. Never better. What? She's better than she's been for years. Oh. Now, with that so, we wanted to postpone the wedding. Are you really going through with it, Jim? Of course I am. What else can I do? A man of honor, aren't you? Keep your promise. Well, that's the way things are. You'll have to accept them just as I have. I see. She's deaf, so you can't let her down. That's the way I feel. There's a door. We might as well go in. Jeff, before we go in, I want to be sure of one thing. Yes, Janet? You do love me, don't you, Jeff? Janet, please. You aren't afraid that she can hear you, are you? After all, she can only hear you when she's looking at you. Yes, of course. Then I'm say a... it. Do you love me? You know I do, Janet. Thanks, Jeff. You'd better go in now. Emily has something to say to you. Aren't you coming in? I think now she'd rather see you alone. Janet, please come in. Hello, Emily. You're looking wonderful. Well, Jeff. So you love Janet? What do you mean? I think it's simple enough. I heard you. You heard me? Yes. You can hear. You can hear, Jeff. There's no reason now why you shouldn't tell us. Yes, I think you'd better tell me, Jeff. Emily, I'd... I'd rather do anything than hurt you. Even now, Emily. Emily. Now, look, Jeff. Will it help you any if I tell you I'm not going to ask you to choose between Janice and me? I have no apologies, Emily. You were away a great deal, and we... We fell in love with each other. Janice, what about you? Do you love Jeff? Yes. I love him. See, Jenny, sit down. Jeff, you sit down, too. Both of you. Oh, poor Jeff. You haven't been happy, have you, you and Janet? No, we haven't. Meeting secretly on country roads, over the garage. Over the garage? Yes. It was the only place we could talk alone. Why, that's strange. One night I came home with Dr. Vance. I... I saw a light in the window, and he went upstairs to turn it out. We were there, Janice and I. He saw it. He saw you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. He didn't mention it. He went on the terrace on Thanksgiving Day. He practically challenged me to marry you, Jeff. I wonder why he thought that was a good idea. Yes, I think I'll have to ask him the next time I see him. <laughs> Good morning. Just a minute, please. Pittsburgh Emergency. Yes, he's right here. Who? Hmm? Oh, just a minute, please. Oh, Dr. Vance. Yes? There's a call for you. You can take it there at the desk. Yes, thanks. Hello. This is Miss Blair, Dr. Vance. Hello, Miss Blair. How are you? Just fine, thanks. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, uh, I suppose today's the day for the good wishes. No more so than any other day. Well, you... You are being married, aren't you? Not that I know of. By the way, Dr. Van, you have a lovely voice. You see, this is the first time I've heard it. Hey. Hey, you can hear. You're telephoning. The serum works. You can hear. Hello. Hello. Operator, somebody cut me off. Cut you off, sir? I was talking to Massachusetts. It was a very Hello, important... Dr. Van. It's Blair. Tell me... You, you phoned from here. I was talking to you on the house phone just across the hall. Quick, into my office, right this way. You you can hear him. Yes. It works. Yes, it works. Come here. What? Did I hear you say that you weren't getting married? No, I'm not. Thanks to you. Thanks to me? Well, in the first place, thanks to you I have my hearing back. But more than that, my eyes are open, too. Oh, you mean about, about Skelton and your sister? Yes, yes, that, but more than that. That's why I came to Pittsburgh, to start repaying you. Repaying me for what? Oh, I don't mean money. Once you said you wish you, you wished I had been born poor. Well, I find myself wishing that, too, because I know now what you meant. I would have been useful. I would have learned how to work. Perhaps I began being useful when I started being a guinea pig. And perhaps now I can continue by being an exhibit for you. 
and can you help me to learn other useful things? There was something else I said to you. Remember? What? I... I said there was no Emily Blair in Pittsburgh. Well, there is now. To stay? Yes. What about Blair's town? Oh, that was yesterday, darling. And now? And now tomorrow. stars, Olivia de Havilland and John Lund, come to the footlights for their curtain call, with our congratulations for two excellent performances. And our congratulations to you, Bill. Good night. Good, Good night. night, and thanks to both of you. <laughs> this is William Keeley, saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs>